Hey, this is Russ. Yeah, it's a Saturday for you guys. <laughs> Time for some e-bike discussions. Now, the last e-bike that we did, e-bike video that we did, we were talking about safety for your bike, right? Yeah, how do you secure your bike? And a lot of people mentioned some additional things that I probably neglected to mention. So first off, um, l let me say this. Uh, many people had mentioned stay close to your bike never get it out of your sight yeah i agree with that <laughs> yeah every time i've ever locked up my my bike i've tried my my best to either get back to that bike asap or keep an eye on it while it's locked up yeah so do that so uh, i think somebody else mentioned the, the d locks you know you know those locks that uh, I, uh who made those originally i think kryptonite may have made those originally i'm not sure who originated the d lock but yeah, it kind of looks like a D-shaped thing. I actually had one of those when I first got my first bike, and I found that I couldn't secure the frame and the front wheel with the D-lock and have that uh, connect to whatever uh, stationary object I was going to lock it to because it's not long enough or big enough to be able to do it. I mean, some of the fat tire bikes are so fat, there's not a whole lot of space left <laughs> once, you, once you try to lock it to the frame. So I think even with those type of things, it's usually you, you might have to just lock the frame to the stationary object, and then you might have to add an additional cable thing in order to get to the front wheel. And the whole thing with the front wheel thing is, is the quick release, right? Because that could be stolen. Somebody also mentioned, too, about your, your bike saddle. Yeah, that's got a quick release, too. Actually, the very first e-bike that I had, um, I took off the quick release on the saddle and put a stationary... Uh, locking mechanism on the saddle that way that wherever I go they can't steal the saddle at least I mean people can if, if you bring things like uh, like uh, hex drivers with you to steal things you can unscrew it and take the saddle out of it but um, but typically yeah you you either have to take the saddle with you or somehow secure that and uh, another person also mentioned about um, you know, securing the battery so if your battery is easily um, tampered with you want to somehow secure that or take the battery with you because they'll steal that too because the battery's worth a lot of money right it is you know some of these batteries can be anywhere from say 400 to 700 dollars so yeah you gotta secure that as well all right so what else are we going to talk about today on e-bikes well the more i thought about it I, I kept thinking you know and, and i've mentioned this many times already is that you know these bikes are starting to come in for review and uh, yeah, I just made another agreement to take another bike in. <laughs> it's it's going to be bad news for me. Uh, it's all going to pile up at the same time. Um, I have a, several bikes already in the house waiting for the reviews, and the weather is not cooperating. Um, but yeah, I made an agreement for one more bike. And here's, here's the reason. It's because if I don't agree to them now, I may not get them later. So I have to take them in. And all the manufacturers are releasing their bikes at the same time because they want to get that early, uh, early sale. That you know, as people are thinking about, oh, the weather's getting better. It's time for me to get out there, and so they all want to capitalize on that. So they all offer their new bikes at the same time. Now, I could just say no, but uh, again, as a manufacturer I've worked with before, they got a new model coming out. And I've usually taken whatever they've offered me because their models have been pretty decent for the price. So I just said, okay, uh, <laughs> send it to me. <laughs> and uh, I just kept thinking in the back of my mind, how am I going to deal with all these things coming in? So excuse me when I have to go do a whole bunch all at the same time. All right. It'll be one right after the next. I know that's the only way I'm going to get through them and uh, be able to get it out in time for when they expect the videos will come out. So I'm just hoping the weather gets better. So anyway, so that's I guess that's my problem, something that I have to worry about and think about and try to decide how I'm going to do it. So, all right, what else are we going to talk about today? Well, I was thinking about the, uh, the new bikes that were coming in and some of the features that are coming in that I see to be kind of common happening now, yeah. Well, we already know about, uh, you know, uh, hydraulic brakes are pretty much the standard at this point. Uh, very few bikes have mechanical disc brakes unless it's under a certain price point. But um, uh, hydraulic brakes are pretty much standard. And the torque sensor issue seems to be the big thing now. Everyone wants a torque sensor. Now, here's another thing, too, is the mid-drive versus the, uh, the hub-drive type motors. Which of these two should you get? 
I'm going to tell you, if, if, if you like pedaling a lot, okay, I mean, you're just a peddler, <laughs> you're going to probably want the torque sensor, yeah, because it's going to make it feel like a regular bike, and the more effort you put in in, in, the, in the, the pedaling, the more the bike will respond, okay? But if you're like me and you're not a major ped peddler, I'll pedal every now and then, but then I get tired and then I kind of back off. Uh, a cadence sensor is a lot easier to work with because you know you don't have to work real hard and that bike will move. Okay, the torque sensor you got to work to get that thing moving. The harder you work, the faster that bike will will uh, respond. So, and then you of course have pedal assist levels. You could change the levels to where you want, and you know it'll move accordingly. So. My, my feeling is this, um, I think most people think they want the torque sensor, but then when they have one, they kind of think, mm, eh, maybe I should have gotten the cadence sensor. Now, if you don't have one to compare, you, you don't know any different, right? You just figure that's how e-bikes are. But those who have had the cadence sensor move to the torque, start thinking maybe I should move back to the cadence sensor. That's my thinking. Others feel fine with it, but again, you have to be one that likes to pedal. Now, let's talk about this whole thing with the mid-drive versus the hub, hub drive motors, okay? <laughs> now, I have one mid-drive bike that's a Hemiway bike. That's the Hemiway Rambler, all right? Now, I asked for the mid-drive because, first off, I wanted to see how mid-drives work, and I wanted to see how uh, the audience reacts to the mid-drive. But I think when people found out that you have to shift the mid-drive... <laughs> A lot of people started coming back to me and saying, yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I usually leave it on level six or seven on my, on my gears, and then I just pedal, and then I just use the assist levels to move my, my speed up and down, right? But when they found out that, yeah, you got to shift that thing back down to one or two or wherever, you got to be in a lower gear when you start pushing the pedals and then shift up <laughs> and then shift back down, they didn't want to do it. They kind of looked at it as like being a manual driven, manual driven automobile, right? If you're, if you're not one that likes driving manual cars, you're probably not going to be one that likes driving mid drive bikes. Yeah. So now here's a couple things. There's several bikes out now that have a pretty decent price and they got mid drive motors on them. So now you have to start thinking, do I want a mid drive or don't I want a mid drive? Okay. Now, other bikes have been offered to me to have an option of mid drive or cadence, um, mid drive, I'm sorry, mid drive or uh, hub drive motors on it. And guess which one I picked? Yeah, I've always picked the hub drive after that. I think that, uh, that Rambler will be the one and only mid drive bike I will ever get because it's not really me. I just don't feel comfortable having to shift all the time. It's a lot easier for me to leave that thing in level six or level seven on my gears and then just use the pedal assist levels to move me if I'm pedaling. And of course, I, I throttle a lot while I'm doing my, my videos. So really, the, the uh, mid-drive motor doesn't make sense for my type of riding and my type of things for videos. But uh, that's something you have to really kind of think about. Do I really want that mid-drive or I don't? Because now the pricing is well worth mid-drive bikes. Yeah, I mean, I, we, we see a number of them under $2,000. Yeah, they're giving you a lot for the money. Yeah, this year, I think you're going to see a lot of features for the money. I mean, things, these are features that we could have never thought about having three years ago. You know, when I first started my e-bike channel, um, it's been quite a few years now, right? Um, very basic bikes, and it'll cost you $2,000. Now, for $2,000, you got a lot of options. you got full suspensions on them. You've got uh, mid-drive options on them. You've got... Uh, um, um, cadence sensor or torque sensor uh, bikes, you know, and and like I said, the the new uh, U free bike. Uh, I'm still waiting to do the review on it. <laughs> Gives you an option to even jump back and forth between mid drive or I'm sorry, between <laughs> cadence or torque sensor, right? So even within one bike, you can jump back and forth and make a decision how you want to ride that bike. All you have to do is get into the menu and choose torque or choose cadence, and it'll go that way. <laughs> Could have never done that for the price back in the day. So anyway, that's basically all I wanted to say is that a lot of bikes are coming in now. Uh, reviews will be coming shortly. As soon as the weather gets better here in the Chicago area, I'm taking all these bikes out and starting to work on them, right? 
And uh, you'll have to make some decisions. If there's a new bike for you and you haven't bought one, yeah, I would say hold off a little bit, just a little bit until you see some of these reviews and then you can start making decisions. Even if that's not the bike for you, you'll get an idea of how bikes react based on the features that's on there, okay? All right, that's basically all I wanted to say for today. I hope you guys have a good weekend. Happy Easter for those who celebrate it. Uh, by the time you see this video, the next day will be Easter. And watch on Monday. There is an Anything Goes Monday video um, that you may want to watch. All right, put some comments below. Let me know what you think about the torque sensor versus cadence sensors, hub motors versus um, mid drives. I'll talk to you guys next time.